Welcome to St. Francis on this third Sunday after the Pentecost. If you are new and or visiting with us for the first time, please sign the guest book in the North X. If you would like to remain in touch with us, and why wouldn't you, please <laughs> sign a blue cue card so that we can make that connection and get uh, all of your information in the places that it needs to be so that you can stay in touch with us. Is there anyone wanting to introduce themselves by name? Perhaps somebody is returning. Uh, perhaps somebody has a guest that they would like to introduce. Perhaps you're just extroverted and want to say hi. Uh, my name is Tom Tuthill. I'm a summer resident here, and I, I came last week and joined the choir this week. Wonderful. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> anyone else? Um, oh, great. Yeah. Welcome back, Chris. Good to meet you. All are welcome to a time of coffee, food, and fellowship in the Undercroft following, following the service. There is a forum discussion that is lay-led that will take place following coffee hour. And tomorrow at 4 o'clock, as we do every Monday in my study, we gather around the following Sunday's lectionary. We pray over them, and then we pray evening prayer. If you don't know what I'm talking about and are like, what is going on there? It would be easier for you to come and experience it than for me to take the time to explain it. And I, if you feel any ounce of curiosity, just try it once. Um, and uh, you might find that you two are hooked like those of us who gather are. That's at 4 o'clock. And then on Wednesdays uh, this week, we're still continuing Bishop, uh, presiding Bishop Curry's book. We're in Chapter 8 of the way of love. And um, if you need a copy of the book, I can get one to you. Let me know today, and I can get that to you today. If um, you've never read the book, you can still come and participate in the conversation. And uh, we always have a wonderful uh, casual Eucharist around the altar that is in the sacred space downstairs. Next Sunday begins our eight o'clock service for the summer. That will be a right one spoken service. And then at nine o'clock through the summer months, I will be offering a study on the Gospel of Mark. Come as you can. That will be in my study at nine o'clock. And then this service time remains the same through the summer. And also, uh, just to note, because it is next Tuesday, June 18th at seven, that there is a special concert here put on by the Outreach Committee they're all going to perform something in the way of delicious, delectable delights for the reception. They agreed to do that if I would play some music, which is another part of my life. Um, if we're meeting for the first time, you now know something new about me. And uh, all are welcome to come to that, and that is to raise money for the outreach committee that supports um, local, local uh, concerns in our community. At this time, Tyler has a presentation to make. I'm going to give you an update on the refugee students at GSA. And before I do, I should provide you with some background because I think there are some new faces in the church and uh, on how St. Francis was crucial to the creation of the Refugee Education Fund for GSA for those who are unfamiliar with this story. I am on the board at GSA, although I will be leaving the board after my 12th year on Thursday next week. But this particular initiative is very, very dear to my heart. Almost three years ago, members of St. Francis took the initiative in supporting an Afghani young man and his mother in their escape from Afghanistan, where they were in very real danger from the Taliban. This was a young man whose brother had been a student of an administrator at GSA, and that administrator brought the family's plight to our attention, and specifically to Prudy's attention. A number of people in the Blue Hill Peninsula helped this mother and son to obtain an expedited visa, thanks to Jared Golden, that was based on a letter of acceptance from GSA. None of this was easy, and it took almost a full year to accomplish 
to bring him out, the mother and the son, out of Afghanistan to support them in Pakistan, to get through the visa process, to fly to the United States, to be reunited with their family in uh, Salt Lake City, and then for Mahi to come to GSA, and he stayed a large part of his time with me. Um, a group of us, the Refugee Education Fund Committee, with participants from almost all of the churches throughout the Blue Hill Peninsula and Deer Isle, as well as many other generous, generous individuals, raised the money to provide full financial support for him and for two wonderful Ukrainian students who just happened to apply at this very same time. And we took them and we raised the support for them. As I said when I spoke earlier, a couple of years ago, why these students in particular? Why not others from other countries which are also in dire need? And there are so many countries that are war-torn and so many people who are refugees in such need. Melissa put it beautifully. These are the ones who knocked on our door. Was this not God's will? Our committee continued working the following year to provide a second year of full support for the two students who were still at the school. We held many events and talked to everyone we knew, and we succeeded, but only because the community, the Blue Hill Peninsula community, and people in this church stepped forward to support these young men. Mahdi came from Afghanistan. He graduated in 2023. He is at the University of Utah, and he is doing well. And what he does on Mother's Day is he sends me a grandma is a great mom who's been promoted. <laughs> he sees me a bit as his surrogate grandmother. Um, Levko comes from Ukraine, and he graduates today at 2 o'clock from GSA. And he is going to attend either, and he's trying to still make up his mind, the Maine Maritime Academy, where he would do a program in international business and logistics, or the honors program at the University of, of Maine at Arano, where he would be studying international affairs. He's still making up his mind, as I said. <laughs> Carrillo, also from Ukraine, but not related, Will to Levko, is going to graduate next year in 2025. And this is the new part. Anna, a girl, also from Ukraine, also not related to the other boys, has been offered a place at GSA in the junior class if our community can raise, our committee can raise her full tuition. The community can raise her full tuition. In her letter to the school, she writes, and it's poignant, the war changed my life. It was divided into before and after. For the first time in my life, I heard the terrible sound of a siren. During school lessons, we have to go down into the bomb shelter and pray to stay alive. Massive power outages began, and therefore we could not work in computer science classes, and it was difficult to do homework in other subjects. I grew up in a moment when I went down to the basement and worried about every animal and person. Still, I believe that the war will end and we will be able to live in peace. Anna found GSA on her own. She found it through an internet search and decided this was the right place for her to come. From what I gather, she's been studying in mathematics at the school in, um, in uh, Ukraine. And, I, and she's a lovely girl. I have some pictures of her if you want to see during the coffee hour. I want also to, to single out a praise for Kate Morenin. She stepped forward at that very first discussion to off if, if, when we were talking about whether Mahi could even get to this country. But she said if he did, she would work with him as a therapist. Kate is trained to work with those who've suffered trauma. And she has offered her services again. This is a tremendous gift. Now, the committee has planned a series of fundraising events that are going to start fairly soon and going to run through the fall, and the first of which is going to be a concert on International Refugee Day, which happens to be June 
20th. What's amazing about this concert is that it features three reverends or pastors or priests. I never know the right word to call them. <laughs> and you know who one of those reverends might be. The other two will, are Jeff Patnot of the Baptist Church and Lisa Durkee of the Congregational Church. And it, this concert's going to take place at 7 p.m. on June 20th, which is a Thursday, at the Baptist Church. And please mark your calendars, and I know it follows up two days later for the church where Douglas is going to give this wonderful concert right here for the Outreach Committee at St. Francis. But both of these events are for really, really good causes, and I really do encourage many of you to come. And most of all, I hope that you all, all of you sitting here in these pews and anybody who happens to be hearing me online, I hope that all of you are immensely proud of St. Francis for starting this movement. And I'm sure you'll help us to continue it. Thank you. On behalf of all of us, Tyler, we say thank you.